Well, if individuals uh, uh, have documented history of trauma in their childhood, uh, the odds are that they may have reduced response to antidepressant agents. In addition to that, uh, we need to recognize that uh, major depressive disorder as a single biological entity does not exist. So we're not treating depression, we're treating depressions. Uh, there has been a large study uh, uh, with over a thousand patients, it's an imaging study, looking at the pattern of brain activity in individuals who have uh, MDD and looking at their symptomatic expression. Uh, what has been concluded is that there are at least four subtypes of major depressive disorder. On the other hand, symptomatic presentation does not tightly correlate with biological subtypes. Therefore, just looking at the symptoms, we cannot really distinguish what is going on biologically in, in these individuals' brains. Why is that important in the context that you have asked me? For a very simple reason. These individuals who already have hard time responding to pharmacotherapy, number one, they do need coverage for psychotherapy because otherwise our ability to help them is significantly reduced. Number two, we need to have more free reign to choose pharmacotherapeutic agents given that depression is already biologically diverse. So there will never be one treatment fits all for treatment of major depressive disorder. And uh, a fallacy that has been propagated is we look at remission and response rates and across the classes of antidepressants they appear to be similar. It does not mean that they are one and the same patients because it is a diverse condition. So I think that physicians should be given more opportunity to tailor treatment approach both in combination of psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy and to choose pharmacological agents that are most likely to result in remission and response in, in this very difficult to treat uh, group of uh, depressed patients.